Gomez family lives in a shantytown on the outskirts of Lima. Only a few years ago, the family lived in a rural village in the Peruvian Andes, where they had a small farm. The region was prone to droughts, and they could never earn enough income to escape poverty. Many of their neighbors in the village had migrated to the city in the 1980s, pushed by civil conflict in the countryside. The Gomez family refused to go for fear of losing their land and finding nothing better in the city. The risk was too large. Peru was a different place at that time. Inflation and unemployment were rampant, and the threat of civil conflict was ever-present. In the 1990s, the macroeconomy was stabilized and the civil conflict ended. New opportunities started to arise in urban and rural areas. At first, these opportunities eluded the Gomez family. A dam had been constructed near the village where the family lived, but using its waters required the renovation of canals on their farm. They applied for a loan from a commercial bank but were denied, which came as no surprise since it was their first time applying. Mr. and Mrs. Gomez came to believe that their children had no future in the village and decided to migrate to the city. This time, however, they did not have to worry about losing their farm. They had been given a property title and were able to sell the farm to a richer neighbor who had the capital to renew the canals. The money from the farm would give the Gomez's a cushion as they took the momentous risk of migration. Lima, with just under 10 million inhabitants, seemed like a huge and inhospitable place to the Gomez family. That is why they decided to move to the shanty town, where many members of their village had relocated. There they would find companionship, cultural identity. All the festivals of their old village were properly celebrated here. And of course, help finding a job. Mr. Gomez got a job on a construction site, but the work was irregular with frequent layoffs. Mrs. Gomez would have to pitch in and she was fortunate to find work as a seamstress in a textile enterprise. The grandmother helped out, taking care of the children when they returned from school. Having two income earners and a willing grandmother made the Gomez household more resilient to whatever might happen. And things did happen. Mario, the eldest son, was injured in a traffic accident. There was no car insurance, and the Gomez family had to bear the cost of Mario's medical treatment. They could not have done it alone and they didn't have to. They relied on a public hospital run and financed by the state. Medical treatment there was of uneven quality, but it provided basic services. The Gomez family had to spend some of their limited savings to supplement the hospital services and buy medications, but all that was worth it because Mario recovered. The Gomez's had to dig into their assets once again, but this time for a very different purpose. Elena the second daughter, whom everyone regarded as the brains in the family, came home one day and asked her parents if she could study English in the evenings. This was a good idea. Peru had recently signed several free trade agreements, one of them with the United States, and exporting companies had started to grow, offering jobs to young, qualified people. English would be a big plus. Some months before, however, her parents would have declined her initiative on the grounds that it was not safe to be out at night. Police protection was scarce in the outskirts of the city, and criminals took advantage of that. When a crime wave eventually affected the Gomez's shanty town, the community put together neighborhood patrols, effective, although at times unduly harsh. When Elena asked for English classes, the safety risk had been reduced, and she could go out to study in the evenings. As time passed, Elena and her family would be well prepared to benefit from the period of stability and sustained growth that Peru was experiencing. Confronting risks and seizing opportunities may have put the Gomez family on the path out of poverty, possibly forever. It was their work, initiative, and responsibility that made it possible, but they could not have done it alone.